this time. Time is a mystery. No one really knows what it is. Fireworks. A rock colliding with another rock. How much time would have happened for these events to happen? Maybe a second? Maybe two seconds? Well, for us, the big firework that happened 14 billion years ago, called the Big Bang, it's still happening. It's called the universe. For someone else, the Big Bang event might have just been over in two seconds. 90 million years ago, the Indian tectonic plate split from Madagascar and started moving towards Asia. 50 million years ago, the tectonic plate collided with Asia, forming the Himalayan mountains. To this day, the same tectonic plate is still pushing into Asia making the Himalayan mountains grow in a way. This rock colliding event for us humans is a span of 90 million years. For some other creatures or someone else, it could have well just been over in 5 seconds or maybe 10 billion years. Time is a measurement of duration. Can we pass further into time to go into the future? Can we back into time to go to the past? Physics laws say yes. Let's see if it works. Is time absolute or relative? First, let's define what absolute and relative means. Absolute means that the measurement of the property of an object is the same and unchanging no matter what frame it is being measured in. Relative means that the measurement of a certain property of an object depends on the frame from which it's being measured in. For example, a truck that is moving at the speed of 80 miles per hour contains a bicycle which is moving in the container of the truck at a speed of 10 miles per hour. A person who is in the container measures the speed of the bicycle. He will measure that the bicycle is moving at 10 miles per hour. Another person who is outside of the truck, standing on the side of the road, measures the speed of the bicycle that is in the container of the truck. The person on the road would measure that the bicycle is moving at 90 miles per hour. Depending on where the observer is, the measurement is different to each observer. The measurement is relative to which frame it is being measured in, hence making it relative. So speed is relative, then what is time? Sir Isaac Newton has said that time and space are absolute in all observed frames. What he means is that one meter of space on Earth is equal to the same amount of space on Mars or anywhere in the galaxy or even in the whole universe. The same is true for time. One minute on Earth is the same amount of time being elapsed at any part of the universe. Einstein contradicted that theory and said that time and space are not absolute, but relative to how faster or slower they move. For example, person A is standing at a spot, not moving. Person B is on a train, moving. In person A's point of view, person B's time would elapse slower than person A's time since person B is in motion. The moving object is shrinking toward the direction it is moving. Let's see how Einstein discovered it. To find the speed of the bicycle that was moving inside the truck, we added the speed of both the truck and the speed at which the bicycle was moving at. But the same thing does not happen for light. The speed of light is 186,000 miles per second. Let's assume that a truck is moving at the speed of 10 miles per second. A person who is standing on top of the truck shines a beam of light. What should be the speed of that beam of light? It should be 186 and 10 miles per second. But when it is measured, it does not say that the speed of that light beam is 186,000 and 10 miles per second. It shows the normal speed of light. Even if the truck, which still has the person shining a light beam ahead, goes at the speed of 93,000 miles per second, the speed of that light beam still stays at 186,000 miles per second. 
Let's pretend that a person is moving along with the light at light speed and shines a beam of light ahead of him. The speed of that beam of light still does not increase. It stays the same at the speed of 186 miles per second. Einstein provided a clever solution for this strange phenomenon called the special relativity. He derived a list of logical factors that cause this phenomenon. These are time and space. He designed logic as time should, uh, should be going slow and the length of space is reduced. If we apply this logic, then it makes sense of the strange behaviors of the light. Yes, the time of moving clock is going slower than the clock is not moving. This is called time dilation. The length of space is shrinking toward the moving direction called space contraction. So time and space are not absolute but relative. This is special theory of relativity. Time and space are bent toward moving directions. Assume the time dilation is 50%. In a stationary frame, two seconds elapsed, but in the moving frame, only one second elapsed. So in the moving frame, one second occupies two second duration. The two meter space becomes one meter in the moving frame. One meter occupies two meter in the moving frame. We can graph it. At the beginning, one second of moving frame is one second of stationary frame. Then, one second of moving frame is 1.5 of stationary frame. And so on. The faster speed, the slower time. So space is also the same. At beginning, one meter space is one meter in both frames. Then, the moving frame occupies more space than one meter. Time and space are bent toward the moving direction. Is time dilation true? Yes, to its proven. Muon is an elementary particle similar to electrons, dies in 2 millionth of a second. Muons are accelerated to 667 miles per second. In Fermin National Acceleration Laboratory, muons die in 20 millionth of a second. That is 10 times longer than normal muons. Global positioning system is also using time dilation. The GPS satellites are moving faster and above the Earth's gravity. Both special and general theory of relativity is playing and causing time dilation. So the time of clocks in a satellite are adjusted periodically to sync with clocks in Earth. That's why we are able to track the exact location using GPS. Let's assume that there are two identical twins by the name of Owen and Alex. Owen leaves Alex behind to go on a deep space journey. Owen travels at light speed for five years and takes another five years to come back to Earth. To Owen, it feels like ten years, but for Alex, the time that has elapsed since his twin's departure is fifty years. Owen is now only thirty years old, whereas Alex is now seventy years old. Owen is technically in the future. Russian cosmonaut Sergei Avdiev orbited the Earth for 748 days and was hence hurled 0 0.02 seconds into the future. He now holds the world record for being in the future. Time is slowing down as he increases the speed at which he is moving in. Once he reaches the speed of light, time stops. What will happen once he surpasses the speed of light? Time will be in the negatives, so he's going to be moving in the past. He will make a hole in space and time if he moves faster than the speed of light. He has just created a wormhole. Since time is now in the negative, space should also be in negative. What that means is that he's going to be now on the other side of the wormhole. What is on the other side of the wormhole? 
the past of our universe, the other side of our universe, maybe an entirely new universe? Can we go faster than light? Einstein told us that it is impossible. Although Einstein said that traveling faster than light is impossible, there has to be other ways. Let's take a girl and a boy. The boy asks the girl if he can kiss her. She says to him that he can kiss her if he does what she says. Her task for him was to go to a distance and move 1% of that same space from where he is to where she is forward. And then to do the same thing over and over again until they both can touch. Poor chap doesn't realize that he will never reach her. But one of the ways he can reach her is by just walking up to her. He chooses not to. The same can be said about faster than light travel. There probably are other ways, we just need to find them. In 2011, an international group of scientists had made an astonishing claim. They have detected particle neutrinos that travel faster than light. Why time and space are bending while moving fast. The mass of an object bends time and space. Nothing happens when it's moving slow. When it's moving fast, it creates a hole. Because it gains mass when it's moving fast. Einstein's general theory of relativity explains this. Sir so Isaac Newton said that massive objects have an attraction called gravity. Gravity is the reason we stay on Earth and not float away into space. Gravity is the reason the Earth orbits the Sun. But Newton has never mentioned the reason for this attractive force called gravity. Einstein has said that mass of an object bends in space and time. Einstein explains this in general theory of relativity. Time moves slower near the massive object and space shrinks near the massive object. The more the mass the object has, the slower the time is and smaller space. So the moving object is slipped into this bending area of time and space. This is gravitational attraction. What will happen if the mass of an object is infinite? It should make a hole in time and space, right? This is black hole. There, time and space are negative. The other side of the black hole might be another side of the universe, or it may lead to a whole new universe. Somebody is doing the fireworks of the universe. They must be moving very, very slowly, or they must be residing in a massless or an anti-mass land. So let's hope that someone like Doc comes over with his DeLorean and takes us back into the past or into the future. Till next time, folks!